one in four of us has a mental illness. And if that's not you, then it's probably somebody you know. Our young minds should be safe in the hands of the NHS, but all too often we're not getting the care we deserve. My name is Johnny. I'm 26 years old, and I have schizoaffective disorder, a combination of schizophrenia and depression. I was let down by the health service when I came close to taking my own life. I was at risk for myself, so why did it take so long to actually get help? Over the past five months, I've traveled the country meeting other young people who are just as angry about their treatment. My life was like falling apart and I had to beg and fight for this appointment. I do blame them for my mental health deteriorating afterwards to a point where I wanted to hurt myself. That's what they make you feel like. They make you feel like you are a burden. I'll be meeting the medics exposing the truth about a failing system. There are cuts happening everywhere, and the, the people that suffer because of that are the patients. And I'll be hearing from the families still looking for answers. One of the hardest gifts to buy your child is a headstone. It's the final gift. I'm going to reveal just how badly those of us with mental illness are being failed by the NHS and what the government is going to do about it. Dr. Ran Singh works in A&E departments and specialist children's units where he regularly treats young people with mental health problems. We know that with antidepressants in young people there are risks involved and you have to take that into account and you have to talk about that with your patients. Difficulty is when you've got 10 minutes to see and sort and decide on a treatment and discuss everything with them, it's an extremely difficult situation and I, I don't think it's good enough. Elliot's not alone in being frustrated with NHS waiting times for talking therapies. We know what somebody needs and we're up against a waiting list and we can only recommend that they go on that waiting list and wait. Sometimes we can't access services that we previously used to be able to. And that's because, um, principally, it's because of funding. I found out that up to a third of teenagers are also being abandoned by camps when they approach adulthood. When people are transitioned from CAMS to adult services, that transition should be integrated, it should be graded, it should be based on an introduction and a step-by-step -step process. It should involve the young person in terms of negotiating and planning their care. That's the best way to do it. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen that way in many instances. There was a study in London that was done and only 4% of young people experienced a good transition. Only 4%. I think that's a shocking figure. According to Dr. Ran Singh, the problem behind Rachel's poor care is simple, not enough money. Spending on mental health has fallen for the second year in a row. The tricky part of it is that everything requires funds. Everything requires it. And if mental health as a whole isn't funded adequately, all the services underneath that umbrella suffer. And there are cuts happening everywhere, and because of that, services are being changed and thresholds are being changed and referral criteria are changing. So, and the, the people that suffer because of that are the patients that need the greatest care.